Fumi Nation, how are you? How are we? My name is Fumi De Salovold. For those of you that are stopping by for the very first time, you guys are so welcome. Oh, it took a while for me to do this episode. I couldn't sleep last night. It, it really bothered me. I couldn't sleep. I tossed and turned. I was up at 1. I was up at 4 a.m. And I just kind of finally woke up at around six. I just kept on thinking about what had happened to this beautiful girl. So let me tell you what I know. Shankwella Johnson, 25 years old. She has a hair breeding business. Beautiful girl. And, um, and she went on the 28th of October to Cabo San Lucas. She told her mother that she was going there to celebrate a birthday party for one of her friends. The following day, she was dead. Just like that. She went to Cabo with six other friends. I'm going to list all of their names right here. And one of her friends called her mother and told her mother that she had alcohol poisoning. Her mother told the friend, tell Shanquella to call me when she comes to. And about 24 hours later, she got another call from them saying that her daughter was dead. The mother said that each and every one of those friends had a different story. It sounded fishy. They got the FBI involved. And when the autopsy came, it didn't show any alcohol in her system. What it showed was a broken neck and a broken spine. And in the autopsy, it also read that she had been beaten. $6,000 and two weeks later, the family was able to bring the body back. The friends that were in Cabo left her body and came back home. In a matter of what, one, two days? They went to the mother's house to drop off Shanquella's things. Friends. And that was the end of that. No queries, no questions, nothing. To everybody's utmost shock and horror, a video was released. We do not know who released this video. I watched the video and I regret watching it because it has, I've, I've played it many times in my head and it's so frightening. It's so frightening. And I didn't notice it initially because of how horrific the video was. You can watch this video on my Instagram stories. You guys follow me on Instagram because I'm allowed to put up stuff there that you just can't put here because YouTube does not tolerate that. And I agree. In this case, yes, I do. But if you want to watch the video, you just go to my um, Insta stories on Instagram. And it showed one of her friends. As a matter of fact, I'm going to call out her name. Dajane Jackson. And what's ironic is that this girl is supposed to be an aspiring, she calls herself an aspiring healthcare professional, was beating, was beating Shanquella literally to death. The hatred that this girl had for Shanquella was shocking. And you could see it come right through the screen. I did not notice that Shanquella was naked. She was beating her naked. And there were other people in the room, plus the guy that was filming Shanquella being beaten. He even said, Shanquella, why don't you fight back? And you could hear a very little voice, no. Look, can you at least fight back? No. Why, why is she not fighting back? At least fight back, something. Get up, bro. Get up. Uh -uh. 
wish. She was afraid, she was scared, she was humiliated. She was naked in front of men and women. She was naked in front of her friends. And this beast, this animal, was beating her. She beat her so much that she swung her around and Tranquilla hit the floor. And she just sat there like a rag doll. And she came in and started blowing her again. You know, I tell you this, as a, as a mother, I empathize with, with Shanquilla's mother. I empathize with Shanquilla's mother. And until Adrian was born, I was very much against the death penalty. Very much against it. But when Adrian was born, I realized where I thought I could never, ever, ever, ever kill another human being. Yes, I can. There are instances where you find yourself being capable. If I saw this, and this Dejeuner, whatever Jackson, was doing this to my child, she would have limited time on this earth. Guaranteed. You see, because once my child has passed, I've passed. Once my child is dead, I'm dead. I've got nothing left to lose. And so, these were her so-called friends watching as how this Dejeuner was beating Shanquilla. We don't know how long this went on for. But the autopsy report showed that the wounds and the beatings that Shanquilla suffered, she died 15 minutes after her injuries. She died 15 minutes basically after this beating. And her so-called best friend was filming instead of saving her. Instead of stopping this barbaric behavior, they were filming. Somebody that had some kind of conscience released this. We don't know, but they'll find it. Forensics, they will find it. And so that was how they called the mother and said she'd passed away. I will say this. Everybody has a pattern. Everybody has a habit. Everybody has a way. My friends, my family, know I don't drink alcohol. They know I don't drink. I don't. I don't. From New York to Cali to wherever, to Niger, Fumi doesn't drink. So if you called my mother and said that Fumi was inebriated or was drunk or was out of it because of alcohol poisoning, that's a red flag. Fumi doesn't drink. And who are these friends? Do you know when I went to see Ula in Norway, my parents spoke to Ula. They wanted to know everything about him. They wanted to know where I was staying and, and they checked. When these friends called Mama, to say that your child has alcohol poisoning. Or let us say it had been me. Put me on FaceTime. Let me see her. Put me on FaceTime. Let me see her. Where is she? I need to see her face. Where in this day and age where technology has advanced. FaceTime. I FaceTime my mother all the way in Nigeria. I FaceTime my sister all the way in New York. Anywhere you can FaceTime, I want to see her. When Shanquilla said goodbye to her mother, her beautiful, wonderful mother did not know that that was the last time. So, I am going to tell you in my humble opinion what I think happened. And before I start, I'm going to say this. Jealousy is a horrible thing, and it is usually amongst women. It is blinding. It is pure hatred. 
for that other girl. Usually amongst women, usually amongst our kind. And when I say our kind, black on black, white on white. It's never really black and white or white and black. It's always your own people that have hatred for you, that have jealousy for you. Because somewhere along the line, even though you started at the same level or started at the same line, one of you will go further than the other, quicker, for whatever reason, different passions or whatever. And so that person that's left behind or feels that they are left behind, there's a deep envy, jealousy, and hatred for the other one. You now invest everything. Your happiness, your disappointment is now based on that other person that used to be your friend. You blame that person. You hate that person's shine. Every time that person wins, it brings in a deeper hatred for you because some people are like that. I have an episode called Know Your Frenemies because I've had this kind of experience. You've got to know who your friends are. You've got to know your enemies because sometimes your enemies are masking as your friends. That's what this is. And 99.9, .9, it's usually over a man. This girl that beat Shaniqua the way she did, I'm just waiting because nothing is out yet. It's going to evolve and a lot of stuff is going to start coming out now because we bloggers, influencers, YouTubers, we are sitting on this neck. We are applying pressure on this particular neck. There has to be justice for this child because the way this girl died, this horrific way that she died, there has to be justice. So with everything I've told you, Let's have a clean slate. And I humbly now tell you what I think happened. Shenquela was a dead man walking. This so-called friends of hers, the six of them, had planned this trip solely to kill Shenquela, to get rid of Shenquela. Cabo was far enough to get her away from everybody. Also for them to be able to get away from authority. Cabo was the best place. It had nothing to do with the birthday party. When you travel and you go for a birthday, for a wedding, you see people putting up onto their socials as they are going, we're going to Cabo, we're going to have a birthday party. I cannot wait to see you guys. Each and every one of them would have shown that because this is simple human behavior. The psychosis of human beings. That's how we behave. That's what we do. We put on the socials, this is where we are going, or guess where we're going, and we have our party outfits out on the bed. Did you notice not one of them did it? Got to the hotel, there is no reservation for a party. There is no reservation for a dinner party. There was nobody at the swimming pool. There was nobody in the lobby. There was nobody at the reception who had been told that there was a party of some sort. Not one of them. It was only Shanquilla that told her mother, I am going for a birthday party. When you watch, if you can watch the horrific video of Shanquilla's beatings, there was no festivities in the room. The room looked very bare. As a matter of fact, as if there was a fight that was going to take place and there were things that had been moved away in the room so that they did not destroy the furniture that belonged to the hotel. If you watch it, you will see. And you will see the beater in her droop. She wasn't dressed or anything. I believe that Shenquela was a dead man walking. That she went to Cabo unbeknownst to her that she was walking into a death trap. They had planned this for weeks. They had put things in motion and they were able to get her out there. I believe Shenquela was in the bathroom. I believe that everybody arrived because you have to understand also human behavior. When you are coming, you will have 
drinks, soft drinks, virgin margaritas, whatever, and you'll be all in the room talking and catching up. Why? Because you haven't seen each other for a while. So that night when you come in, you would either be in the room and you're on social media. We're here. We have arrived. Some of you might be tired. Some of you might want to be in the lobby. Some of you might have even gone out. There was none of that in all six of them. All six of them, nobody went out. Nobody went to the social media to say that they'd arrived. Nobody had drinks. Nobody even brought the celebrant to say happy birthday, blah, blah, blah of all six of them. Nobody. So they arrived and they were gassed up. They were prepared mentally, emotionally, physically, because tomorrow they were going to kill Shankwela. You wake up in the morning and what do you do? Have breakfast or whatever, but nobody came downstairs. Check the lobby, check the reception, Check breakfast. Nobody came down. Shankwela went to go and have her bath. And they dragged her out of the bath naked. That was the starting point of it. And they started to beat her. And humiliate her. She, what you, you want to hide? There's nothing you can do. And the friend said, won't you fight? And she said, no. Why? Again, because Shankwela was in so much shock, she didn't know what was coming at her. You see, for you to fight, you have to have adrenaline. You have to be mad. You have to be angry. You have to have been provoked. Shankwela was caught by surprise. That's part of why she couldn't fight, because she didn't know what was going on. And these were her friends. It's a thing where, and I've said it before, if you watch Braveheart, fantastic film, fantastic. Mel Gibson was the lead actor in that film. He had gassed himself up. He was going to go and fight his enemies and he went there in the night. He was going to meet his arch enemy and he thought he was ready. Up until the smoke lifted and he saw it was his friend. He was so perplexed. He was so hurt that the spear fell from his hand. He couldn't fight. He froze. And that was what happened to Shankwela. She froze. Around her like so were her friends. And she couldn't believe what was going on. And they beat her. Beat her. And they beat her. And they beat her. Over 30 blows to the head. And they stood and watched. They stood and watched. They all, they all must go to prison. And while I'm on it, not American, not any prison in America, the Mexican jail. You want to play Cabo? Then we'll play Cabo. They go back there. That is the jurisdiction because that was where the crime took place. We do not know whether her injuries quote and unquote, that were afflicted by these people because her injuries caused her death. But are these the injuries that we see caused by this woman, the ones that caused her death? You see, you're going to have lawyers. I almost studied law. I love law. I think it's sexy as hell, but it's dirtier than dirt. And I have a conscience. That's why I said, let me be an entertainment. I'll do that. But you're going to have the lawyers who are going to spin it. But we know, I know in my soul that this friend beat her to death and they all watched because that was the plan. She was now dead. I believe she died. And now they called the mother to say that she had alcohol poisoning. That was an alibi because what they wanted to do was to call her and let her know alcohol poisoning. Let that sit while they sat back and waited for time to pass to call the mother back and say she had now died. It was a lie. Shanquilla was dead before they called the mother about the alcohol poisoning. She was already gone.
There was a stupid friend who came online talking about, I was there with Shanquilla, she was non-responsive, but she was alive, this, that, and the other, and I was playing music for her, she was this, she was that. It's a BS. It is BS. Any friend, any friend, it doesn't even have to be a friend at this point. It's so unfortunate because nobody heard. Nobody heard what was going on in the room because one of the friends was at the door. I can envision how this went down. And of course, Shanquilla was outnumbered. There was nothing that she could do. But because we have this horrible video, everybody will have to be accounted for. And I will continue to post for justice for Shanquilla. Because this is horrific. But this is what happens when you have a frenemy. This is what happens when you have somebody that is jealous of you. Shanquilla had everything going for her. She had a wonderful, breedy business where she was doing so very well. Beautiful girl, head on her shoulders. That's a lot for some people that are insecure. And this leads me to story time. Listen to the story. It's been 10 years now. And when I look back, I thank God. I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. I had a couple of frenemies and I did not know. And in many ways, this is why I started Sister to Sister. In many ways, this is why I said, I have to be a mother to a lot of you, a sister to a lot of you, because we are missing so much as women. And women, we are the most powerful, but we do not know it. On top of not knowing it, we hate each other so much that that is why it's easy, really easy, because guys get a front row seat of how we treat each other, and in turn, that's how they treat us. I had this friend, and we were both models, both of us. I knew she wasn't that great when it came to personality. She was quiet, opposites attract. I am of a much more colorful personality. To be honest, most of my auditions that I booked was because I was physically present and they loved my personality. And they said, well, she's model, we'll take her. When it came to acting, the same thing. I quickly realized that when we went out, it was always me that got the attention. And I would dim myself down so that she could get her shine. It never really completely worked. I could always see that she had some kind of resentment. And I did the best that I could. I did the best that I could by her, but it was never enough. I would hide when I got auditions. I would hide if I did well for myself. I would hide all of these things from her. And I noticed it was always amongst my black sisters. I hate to say it, but I'm going to call it like it is because this is what happened to Chanquilla right here. It has never been my white sisters. It has always been my black sisters because they compete against me when they should compete against themselves. And so I found myself in a situation and bless her heart because God knows I loved her. What I did not know was that she really wanted to see me dead. And um, in many ways, I feel sad for her. In many ways, it's not her fault, or maybe it is. But I got to find out after that her husband would even say, why can't you be like Fumi? Why can't you be stylish and dress up like Fumi? And that even fueled her hatred for me. To the point, and I don't know why he did it, we went for her wedding. And her husband at the wedding reception speech to her called my name. I mean, if you don't have hatred for somebody, I can see how you could have a reason to. And it came to a head. It came to a big blowout with five girls and me. And I was going to meet them. They had invited me to come and meet them. I got dressed and I was ready. And as I was leaving, Ula said, don't go. 
You know, I tell you something about Ula. He's a lovely man. He's my best friend. He's my husband. He doesn't talk too much. He doesn't say too much. No, he doesn't. But he never liked these girls. And when he said, don't go, I looked at him. And I said, okay. I didn't call and cancel. I just didn't show up. Three years later, a friend of mine got wind that they had set me up. And he said, which was crazy, he went to the meeting place where I was to show up at. They were dressed in jeans, boots, no makeup, hair pulled back, and he was in the background. And he said, I never showed up. I never showed up. He said they were going to. Till this very day, I have like um, a lemon ice spray, and I have my skulker, which is like a huge alarm, and I have a chain. Till this very day. You've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. Envy and jealousy is real. And there are some girls who really feel they can't breathe because you're on this earth. It gives me so much pleasure that every day, if they want to, they'll see me on YouTube shining. All their mothers, he told me, all their mothers died in a matter of six months. All of their mothers died. He said, Fumi, you're powerful. He said, for whatever reason, they felt as if I was some kind of witch. <laughs> yes, they did. That somehow they were like, maybe we should even mess with her. Let her just go. All of their mothers died. Terrible things happened to them. And in some way or shape or form, that was how they redirected themselves to say, let me nurse this. Till this very day, I thank God for Ula, for saving my life. And I thank God. Watch your friends. When you are doing well, sometimes you've got to leave those old friends. You've got to leave that old bus and move on. Because there's a classic saying, you can't eat steak in front of a starving man. When they want so badly what you have and you're acquired to them so easily, it breeds resentment. It breeds hatred until they see you down before they can see themselves up. That's how some people are. God bless this beautiful Chakwela and Chakwela's mom. I promise you, I will do everything on my platform to bring these beasts to justice. And one thing that I want to happen, this crime happened in Cabo. Let them go to a Mexican jail where they will resent their lives. They will want to die. They will want to die every single day of their lives. The friends that were in this room, everything you touch will turn to dust. Everywhere you go, it will be dark. You will never run from this. You will always be fearful for your life. You will never achieve anything in your life. From you to your children's children to your children's children's children. You have now become a pariah. And the sins of the father will fall on your children forever and a day. What you have done is monstrous and you will pay. Do not forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, and above everything, share this episode. All of my love, darlings, stay safe, know your friends. I have a very, very tight and small unit, Christina, and that is it. That is it. Christina will tell you, I don't mess around with nobody, not at all. You show me a little bit of a pink flag, it doesn't even have to be red, you're out. I don't bring anybody in my parameters, not at all because of this and because I was Shanquela once upon a time, but I got saved.